Dear brothers, in this first unit of sociology, we study the definition of sociology, the nature of sociology. Then there are two schools speak of the scope of sociology. First one is specialistic school and second one is synthetic school. Then we see the relationship of sociology with other social sciences. The common, common problem of sociology and economics, the relationship between sociology and history, the relationship between sociology and psychology, and the relationship between sociology and political science. Then the last part of this, this unit we study, methods of sociology. There are seven methods. The first one is questionnaire other method. Then we have scheduled interview method, case study method. Then we have observation method, social surveys, social research. And the last part of this unit we study, statistical method. Introduction to Sociology Sociology is the study of human behavior. Sociology refers to social behavior, society, patterns of social relationship, social interaction and culture that surrounds everyday life. It is a social science that uses various methods of empirical invention investigation and critical analysis to develop a body of knowledge about social order and social change. Sociology can also be defined as a general science of society. While some sociologists conduct research that they may be applied directly to social policy and welfare. Others focus primarily on refining the theoretical understanding of social processes. Subject matter can range from micro-level analysis of sociology, that is of individual interaction and agency, to macro-level analysis, that is of systems and the social structure. Traditional focuses on sociology includes social stratification, social class, social mobility, religion, secularization, law, sexuality, and gender. As all spheres of human activity are affected by the interplay between social structure and individual agency, sociology has gradually expanded its focus to other subjects and institutions, such as health and institution of medicine, economy, military, punishment and systems of control, the internet, education, social capital and the role of social activity in the development of scientific knowledge. The range of social scientific methods has also expanded as social researchers draw upon a variety of quantitative and qualitative techniques. Social research has influenced throughout various industries and sectors of life, such as among politicians, planners, policy makers, legislators, developers, business managers, social workers, non-governmental organizations and non-profit organizations as well as individuals interested in resolving social issues in general. What do you mean by sociology? It is a systematic approach to thinking about, studying and understanding society, human social behavior and social groups. It is the scientific study of society, including patterns of social relationship, social interactions, and culture. 
Now let us see what is the nature of sociology. It is a science. Sociology as the branch of knowledge has its own unique characteristics. It is different from other sciences in certain aspects. An analysis of its internal logical characteristics helps one to understand what kind of science it is. Scope of sociology. It comprehends the forms of social relationship and activities. It is a specific social science which describes, classifies, analyzes and indicates the forms of social relationships, the process of socialization and social organization. In this way, the scope of sociology explains the forms of human relationships and social processes. The scope of sociology is a study of genetic forms of social relationships, behaviors, and activities. According to Vierkand, the scope of sociology is the study of the ultimate forms of mental and psychic relationships. It is because sociology studies the irreducible categories of science. The irreducible categories are the ultimate forms of mental relationship like that of love, hatred, cooperation, competition, etc. According to Max Weber, the scope of sociology consists in the interpretation of social behavior. It is that which is related by the intention of perpetrator, that means performs Latin origin, perpetrene, to the behavior of others and is determined by it. So according to Owen Weiss, the scope of sociology is the study of forms of social relationships and he has divided these social relationships into several kinds which makes material contribution towards wider understanding of social life. Now, let us see two schools which are speaking of the scope of sociology. First one is specialistic school. According to this specialistic school, sociology studies one specific aspect of social relationship and not as a all. And according to this school of thoughts, the scope of sociology consists of forms of social relationship. According to this synthetic school, the scope of sociology is encyclopedic and synoptic. That means a brief summary. So according to the school, all the aspects of social life are interrelated. Hence, the study of one aspect suffices to understand the entire fact. So sociology should systematically study social life as all. Now let us see what are the relationships of sociology with the other social sciences. First we will see the relationship of sociology and anthropology. In sociology mainly we study of modern communities whereas in anthropology mainly we study of ancient communities. Sociology makes use of documents and the statistical methods, whereas anthropology makes use of the functional method. In addition to studying social problems, sociology makes suggestions for their solutions. But anthropology studies social problems but does not make suggestions for their solutions. In sociology, we make a special individual study of various aspects and problems of society. Whereas in anthropology, we study of society as a whole. For example, physical anthropology. 
Sociologists, besides discovering social facts, it also guides their change. But whereas in anthropology, does not guide. Now, let us see the common problems of sociology and economics. The problem of unemployment is mainly an economic phenomena, but it has a social aspect and a selection aspect. There are many problems which are studied by economics and sociology in common. Among them are poverty, population, economic planning and related problems. Sociology consists of all the four aspects of economic activity, namely production, consumption, distribution, exchange. From the sociological viewpoint, all these are influenced by social structure and institutions. Most of the economic problems have some or other social aspects which are studied in sociology. Economic relationships bear a close relation to social activities and relationships. On the other hand, social relation is affected by economic relationship. Due to this close relation, some sociologists have treated economics as a part of sociology. Economic is one branch of the comprehensive science of sociology. Economics is an independent science whose relation to sociology a mutual existence. Then now we see relations between sociology and history. History of cultures and institutions are helpful in the understanding of sociology and connection in the collection of its material. History studies the activities of human, human race. Sociology assists in the study of sociology. On the other hand, history is being studied from the sociological viewpoint. Philosophy and history are also proving very useful for sociology. In this way, sociology and history are of closely related. Now let us see the relationship between sociology and psychology. Psychology is the study of mind and behavior. And sociology and psychology both have much in common and enjoy an intimate relationship. Mike Iver says, sociology gives a special aid to psychology just as psychology gives special aid to sociology. Without understanding human psychology, it is more or less impossible to understand interrelationship and activities related to human beings. Many of the profound truths of psychology remain secret unless we have the knowledge of social relationships, behaviors and activities. Psychology is the positive science of human experience and behavior. Now let us see the relationship between sociology and political science. Knowledge of sociology is necessary for understanding the problem of political science because political problems also have a social aspect. G. G. Kathleen has remarked that political science and sociology are two facts or aspects of a same figure. According to Comte and Spender, Spencer, there is no difference whatever between the two. In the opinion of F.G. Wilson, it is difficult to determine whether a particular writer should be considered a sociologist or political theorist. The laws of the state have a profound influence upon society. It is by means of the government changes 
and improves the society at the same time, it is to keep in mind they look at traditions and customs of the country while formulating laws. For this, the knowledge of society would be needed in making the Hindu code bill assistance was taken. Both are from political and sociology. The problem of deciding upon the form of government is best explained by having resources of both sociology and political science. The problem of determining the government's policy also is common to both. The study of customs, behaviors, institutions and values, etc. are common to both sociology and political science. Now let us study the methods of sociology. There are seven methods. The first one is Kushner method. In general, the word Kushner refers to device for securing answer to questions by using a form which res respondent fills in himself. Purpose of questionnaire to collect information from the respondent who scattered in a vast area. And secondly, to achieve success in connecting reliable and dependent data. Types of questionnaires. First one is structured questionnaire, then we have unstructured questionnaire, then we will see the advantages of questionnaire and disadvantages of questionnaire. Structured questionnaire. There are those which pose definite preordained questions that is they are prepared in advance not constructed on the spot during the questionnaire period. The unstructured questionnaire. It is used mostly in interviews. Flexibility is the chief advantage of this unstructured questionnaire. However, the interviewer is free within limits to arrange the forms and the timing of the inquiries. It is designed to obtain viewpoints options, attitudes, and to show relationship of interconnections between data which might escape unnoticed in more mechanical types of interrogation. Out of the various methods adopted for data collection in sociology, the questionnaire is the most popular and widely used method. In every sociology survey, the questionnaire plays an important role as a popular tool for the collection of data and required information. Then let us see what is the advantage of questionnaire method. Low cost. The cost of conducting research is sufficiently low. Then large coverage. The data can be collected from not only those who are near and also those who are far away. We can collect the data through post or phone. Repetitive information. So the needed information can be collected at regular intervals. Greater validity. Some people are shy in taking to the stranger about their personal matters than in writing them down. The sender needs not to put his signature or address on the form which makes them more confident to give more information. Now let us see the limitations of questionnaire method. Unreliability. The general information cannot be fully reliable. 
incomplete entries some questions may be left without answering then difficulties of bad handwriting if they write with a pencil or overwriting may not able to understand what they have written then poor response all the sent applications form may not be sending to us then possibility of manipulated replies in questionnaire method the respondent gets a sufficient time to supply manipulated information then lack of personal contact impossibility of deeper problem it is not possible for the researcher to go deeper into the feelings reactions and sentiments of the respondent now the second method we are going to study schedule interview method thomas carson macomick says the schedule is nothing more than a list of questions which seems necessary to the hypothesis test schedule is more important method for the study of social problems this method is in many aspects close to questionnaire method but the major difference between the two are that questionnaire method feeling is done by the respondent whereas in scheduled interview method the investigator assist informations and gives them necessary clarification a schedule is the like a questionnaire which contains questions these questions are required to be replied by any respondent with the help of an investigator then scheduled is divided to or three parts according to the nature of the contents they are observation part main schedule and instructions there are different types of scheduled interview method and the aim of all the schedules is to collect data different types are observation schedule rating schedule document schedule institutional survey schedule and interview schedule now let us go through each one first let us understand what you mean by observation schedule the observation form offers the opportunity for uniform classification in recording the activities and social situations or problems or groups observed next one rating schedule it is used when information is to be collected about attitudes opinions preferences inhibitions or other like elements and the value is to be assessed because value of each is required to be measured then we have document schedule it is used for recording data obtained from documents case histories and other materials then we have institutional survey schedule this type of schedule is used to visualize the problems faced by inherent in a given type of institution then we have interview schedule this is used for testing and collecting data as well as for collection of supplementary data then the method of sociology the third one is case study method it is inclusive intensive study of an individual in which the investigator uses all his skills and methods or systematic gathering of enough information about the person to understand how he or she functions as a unit of society it is said the social microscope for the case study method 
so the case study method is a form of qualitative analysis in case study method complete observation of an individual or a situation or an institution is possible one can study every aspect of the concerning unit in minute details case study method is a study of a particular unit in detail then the following are the important characteristics of case study method there are many points single unit analysis intensive study integrated study quantitative study interrelationship can be studied behavior pattern can be studied it helps to formulate hypo hypothesis interpretation relationship of factors then complementary study now let us see the limitations of study method research the researcher develops over confidence secondly generalization is drawn from a few cases then it is quite loose and unsystematic method it consumes more time money and manpower and it is unscientific in case study method objectivity may be lost it is difficult to apply the scientific method in case study analysis there is a scope for errors due to inaccurate observations of the case the method being quantitative in nature is not useful for quantitative analysis sampling is not possible in case study method next one is participant observation method pv young observation according to him observation may be defined as systematic viewing coupled with the consideration of seen phenomena observation is the primary tool of scientific enquiry it is increasingly employed in social science research in physical or natural science researches in this method the data is collected from the field with the help of observation by the observer this meant that it has certain peculiar features and characteristics of its own which other methods in either have nor occupy any important place this method proves a detailed information along that the facility of its execution at the same time it consumes a lot of time energy and money even then it is proved to be efficacious in many anthropological studies especially when we do the study of rural land primitive groups then we have fifth one social surveys social survey intended to be the study of the social aspects of communities composition and activities it aims at the collection of quantitative facts it makes a concrete study of society especially the social problems that exist in the society it presents programs for improvement and development it is conducted within fixed geographical limit it is related to problems of social importance and assists the formulating constructive programs now let us see the kinds of social survey general or special specialized surveys direct or indirect surveys census surveys or sample surveys primary or secondary surveys initial or respective surveys 
official semi official or private surveys wide spread limited surveys public or confidential surveys postal or personal surveys regular or particular surveys the method of sociology the sixth point is social research it is the discovery of new truth about a society it is the systematic method of discovering of few facts or verifying all the facts their sequences interrelationship and other explanation explanations and natural laws in this way search social research or investigation discovers new facts about social activities social circumstances social assumptions social groups social values or social institutions etc and investigates the old facts on these subjects now you see the classification of social research two main categories are theoretical type of research and empirical research theoretical type of research known as pure research it does not depend on primary or secondary data and in empirical research it means practical or observed or experimental it is based on the empirically gathered primary data it aims at an accurate assessment of the condition of the society as well as discovering of facts that cause of a problem and sorting them that is the relationship between literacy and crime the relationship between employment and crime now let us see the objectives of social research the development of knowledge it aims to acquire more knowledge about the social phenomena scientific study of social life it is study is a human being and human behavior and social life of man and welfare of humanity it is the ultimate aim of the research then classification of facts it aims to classify the facts the social control and prediction prediction of the behavior of the particular type of individual under specified condition is one of the objects of research